Okay, so uh, let's agree on a path. What's in this week and what's not? So uh, we're going to be talking about testnet, local net, and beta net. Um, and uh, EVM is there, by the way, for the person who asked about that. You can use it on beta net now. We're not talking about main net, where it's real money, real identity. Uh, that's uh, going to be more work to figure out, you know, how do you operate in a defensive environment where real capital is at stake? Um, you know, how do you manage uh, trustless contracts where you've removed all the full access keys and you want to version the contract, for example? Some of these questions come up on mainnet uh, where uh, it's, it's out of scope for this week. So this week, we're really talking about reading, writing, writing, testing, and deploying to testnet, okay? Um, contract literacy, not contract security. If, if you want to dig deep, you're more than welcome to. We've got some great examples to look at, but we won't be covering this explicitly. Um, NFTs and fungible tokens, we can talk about those, but we won't talk about token economics and mechanism design. We will be looking at the near core contracts, but don't ask me how to port Uniswap to near. If you gave me a week, I don't know if I would even be able to give you an estimate of the level of complexity of doing that. So it's, it's, we're keeping it simple this week. And cross-contract calls, how do you communicate among contracts? That's where the near scalability story comes in, where we can get parallelization among contracts. Uh, we are not going to be talking about sharded compute and storage at a theoretical level. You can read the paper about that. I personally have a hard time following some of those papers myself, but if you get it, more power to you. And I would say, read it and explain it to us. Like you're more than welcome to. I would love that. So logistically, we've got meetings, synchronous and asynchronous activities on the left-hand side, Monday through Friday. So here it's, you know, um, uh, this time today, we have uh, a 60 minute uh, scheduled, but we can extend if we need to. Um, and then Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday for 30 minutes, we'll meet some QA logistics, key questions, whatever. Usually these meetings are lasting 30 to 60 minutes, uh, but we can continue. We have two hours reserved for you. Everything else is asynchronous, right? So uh, th this is the synchronous activities, this welcome and the kickoff that we're doing right now. Tomorrow, uh, Wednesday and Thursday process and aha moments that we share. And then Friday we have demos uh, and saying goodbye. And uh, asynchronous is the reading, writing, testing, and deploying contracts. It's, it's really on you to make this week work. Okay, a lot of self-directed work. And you're gonna be working in groups, by the way. So you can do some solo work for sure, but you'll be producing demos as a group. So what is a demo? By the end of the week, each team is gonna deliver something that looks like this. And we've got a couple of examples for you, actually, seven total examples. So uh, the, the scope is defined by this project, Nearly Neighbors. And don't worry about all the details here, reading all these details. You can check out the, the repository, github.com slash learn dash near and then nearly neighbors. And basically what you'll see is this is a project like Kickstarter for your neighborhood on blockchain where you can propose, hey, I want a coffee shop down the street and I want to attach, you know, a uh, hundred near tokens to that coffee shop. And uh, that way you become uh, one of the proposers for this project. If we hit the threshold, then the proposal turns into a project uh, which actually realizes the coffee shop when maybe an investor and a builder come in and actually decide to make it, let's say an entrepreneur. And then you get you know some benefits as part of that, you know, uh, uh, free coffee for a year or whatever it is based on your, your early investment, right? That, that's kind of the idea here. So we didn't get into all the details, but it's enough to understand how how do you write a contract? This one is in assembly script, but there are many examples in Rust as well. Uh, unit tests, simulation tests, the mockups only. These are just balsamic, very low fidelity, you can tell, very low fidelity uh, wireframes. And the documentation that you see splattered all over the page here, including you know build commands and testing commands and so on. So there is no front end for this. And again, I'll remind you, building a front end for this is extra. It's not necessary because I, I don't believe you're going to be learning very much if you're a front-end developer and you're building a front-end for your contract. In the end, it's a few lines of code that you're using. And you, of course, there may be some patterns there in terms of how do you manage keys and access and signing in and signing out. But we have several examples about how to do this. You can pick up any one of those examples and learn from it. The real challenge for this week is how do you write a contract? How do you write tests for that contract to avoid regression when you change? How do you simulate the behavior of that contract, especially multiple contracts that are communicating uh, using cross-contract calls? And how do you deploy that contract to testnet? Okay, so focus on the back end is another way to say that. We also have three sample projects and, and four demo projects. So the nearly neighbors is this one on the bottom left here that's highlighted in yellow, but there are others. So 
two from each, two demos each from the previous two cohorts. This is the third run of Near Certified Developer. You can take a look and see what they look like. Near Riddles, Redirector Extension, Near Wagers, Near Dice. These are working examples. And I think the Near Dice and Near Riddles are probably the two kind of most complete examples with contracts and front end. But also we have a lottery sample, Meme Museum is a sample, and Nearly Neighbors is a sample. So this gives you an idea of, of what the scope is of this work. What is, what is your output as a group going to look like? All right. Groups of, you know, two, four, I, I would keep it maximum of four people in the group. If you want to do your own individual project, that's fine as well. No problem. And so what does the end of this week look like defining success is that at the end of this course, you can earn this L1, you know, uh, uh, participant certification, which says you've completed the course this week, you were here, you showed up, you delivered a demo. Thank you so much for coming out. Um, the verified developer uh, means you and I sit down or some other experienced near developer for a 30 to 60 minute code review and, and we verify that you actually understand the code that was produced. You can explain it. Uh, I can delete some of the code and you can come back and, and fix it. Um, I can change a test and you can modify the code to pass the new test, for example. Uh, we can refactor it. We can add a new feature. That's what we'll be doing in the 30 to 60 minute code review for the verified uh, developer level. Okay, so just to give you a, a, a distinction there, if you just show up, participate in the demo, contribute to a team, um, and, and take shared credit for the demo, that's the L1 participant. If you want the verified, it means you, you actually need to have a code review uh, with me or, or some other you know, qualified reviewer where we're going to dig into the code, the implementation itself. Yeah, and Sasha, thank you, has posted a little bit more about the, the program in the chat. Okay, uh, L2 is a, a future certification. We have will be something like testnet application with 100 users and L3, a mainnet application with 1,000 users, something like that to give you an idea of, of where we fit. Okay, so this course here is about basic liter literacy and getting started as a re remote first part-time course, uh, you know, where a, a developer can do this during their lunch hour if they have some experience in blockchain or as a junior dev, you can do it maybe with like a couple of hours of work, you know, two to four hours of work, something like that no more than six hours of work a day, kind of pushing yourself, okay? And so what next or what else could you do? At the end of this, uh, there's a, and during the week also, you're more than welcome, this Figment Learn pathway will pay you, you know, uh, money in tokens, uh, you know, something about 20 US dollars worth of tokens for 30 minutes of your time to try some code. In fact, everybody gets paid for finishing this course as well. Uh, there's a, uh, uh, some rates that we pay for participation and then prizes that we pay for, uh, you know, winning uh, demos at the end, something like that. Sasha has the details on these. Maybe you can share them a little bit later or asynchronously. Uh, we have a bounties program where you can earn to solve our ideas. We have some ideas. Um, and so, you know, um, uh, a thousand near tokens or up to 10,000 near tokens, something like that. Per bounty, it takes some time to finish. A grants program where you bring your ideas and we fund, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, tens of thousands or, or uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of tokens to, to build out, uh, you know, new projects, new products, new features on the network. Open Web Collective is like an incubator, raised uh, $15 million for organizations that were teams that were going through that last year in 2020. And there's other things here, you know, Gitcoin Kernel, for example, has an eight week fellowship. If anybody's curious about that, I have, um, uh, you know, kind of access, a discounted access to that uh, program as well. It's basically a eight week boot camp to uh, work with a bunch of entrepreneurs in the Web3 space on, on building a, an idea. Okay. 